Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna make some more progress on the RM250 today. It's back to work. So Haley and I just got back from a wedding not too long ago. That ended up working out just absolutely amazing. It was uh, just a blast out there in Hawaii. We had a lot of family and friends that came out, but it is back to reality and back to work. So I'm gonna show you what we got going on today. So in the last video, we got the forks back together. These things turned out absolutely beautiful. And now it's on to the wheels. Got some new tires, got the tubes, rims are anodized, and basically got everything to put these back together. Just gotta coat these hubs. So that is gonna be the first thing on today's agenda. Now to get these ready for Cerakote, just gotta clean them up, get all this grease and dirt off of them, and give them a blast in the blast cabinet. Now before I blast these, I found a few areas I like to clean up, just smoothing out these uh, casting lines here. There's a few little wear spots and uh, some lettering. I like to just add my own little touch to these things. I got them all smoothed out, looking pretty sweet. This will give it just a little extra sauce. Hubs are all smoothed out and blasted. So to smooth out the casting imperfections, I used a rough wheel from Prime. And for the Sandblast Media, it was 100 grit aluminum oxide. Now, one thing I noticed with these hubs when I was sandblasting is inside the bearing bore, there's some pretty good scrapes down near the bottom. That's gonna impede the new bearing from seating all the way. So when you see something like that, you definitely wanna smooth it out. I was using a little flap wheel to get in there, but at the very bottom, I have to take like a pick, something to dig that material out of there. And what's nice about Cerakote, it's only about a thousandth of an inch thick. And so you don't need to mask off like the rotor mounting surfaces or the mounting holes. Only thing I really mask off is the uh, surface where the bearing sits. All right guys, hubs are all done. Check out this color. Hard to beat that. So this is called the Tungsten H237 from Cerakote. Man, seeing these hubs all coated up and looking good is getting me really excited to get these back together. I think this tungsten is gonna go perfect with that yellow. Last thing I gotta do with the hubs is press in some new bearings. These ones are from Pro-X. So a method that I found that works really good for popping in these bearings is using Basically a sweating in method where you cool down the bearing, heat up the hub, and that creates a diameter difference where it just basically slides in. So here in the Ziploc bag, I've got the secret sauce. This is dry ice. Basically just put the bearing on top of the dry ice for, I don't know, 30 seconds. And it cools down that bearing pretty quick and then just use a torch on the hub. So the reason why this works is when you cool things down, they contract or shrink. And when you heat things up, they expand. So it works good if you have these in a Ziploc bag and then just kind of crush up the ice and put it around the bearing. And you're gonna hear them squealing a bit. That's when you know they're cooling down. All right, the hub is nice and toasty. You wanna to make sure you have a socket and a hammer as well as your spacer handy. That way you can work quick. So 
So the bearing will get pretty much flush and then you just gotta either press it in or use a socket and a hammer. Just make sure the socket you're using matches up with the outer diameter and that's what you're pounding on. And uh, you just don't wanna pound on this inner race here. So you wanna work quick while that thing is still hot. And then when you get to the bottom, it'll start to sound a little bit different, like a different sound to the hit. Now we're ready for the other side and you absolutely do not want to forget the spacer that goes in between. I've done that before and it's uh, pretty frustrating. So drop that collar in there and then you can just do the same process. It also helps to throw a little grease on the race here after you've heated it up. You can see if you work quick, that thing will just drop right in. And then you can just tap it in the rest of the way. Make sure you uh, are aware of the spacer in there. You don't want to get that crooked. But basically, just tap it until you make contact with the sleeve in the middle. All right, all looks good. Bearing still spins smoothly. Ooh, that's hot. And just throw a little grease on the lip for the uh, seal. And those pretty much just press right in with your fingers. Now with these seals, you wanna make sure the flat surface is facing out. And also with these bearings too, if you have a bearing that has this seal, you want that seal to be on the outside. So I push these in basically just till they're flush with the hub. All right, that's it for the front hub. Let's move on to the rear. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different because you have two bearings on the sprocket side. And you wanna pay close attention to the bearings, like the width, the diameters, some hubs you'll have different bearings. Looks like on this one, all of them are the exact same size. Now, one more thing with these bearings, they come pre-packed with grease from the factory, but if you wanted to, just for peace of mind, you could pop off these little seals, those small flat blade screwdriver and pack some more grease in there if you wanted to, but I found they already come packed pretty good from the factory. Sounds like I'm wrestling a pig over here. Just gotta choke him out. And you definitely wanna make sure you give lots of heat to this thing. Whoa. Anyways, make sure you don't have the torch tip in the hole before you start. But just give it lots of heat. That'll help things slide in a little easier. And even with it Cerakoted, it ain't gonna harm that coating at all as long as you're not heating directly on the Cerakote. That's what I'm talking about. That's crazy. Come on, let's see if this one will go too. So you can see it's kind of a hit and miss and you gotta work really quickly. I don't think that second bearing was all the way on the ice. The first one just dropped in immediately. So I'll basically tap in the bearings until the collar in the middle is just barely able to move. You can see it has a little bit of play but isn't just floppy in there. All right, that is it for the bearings. Hubs are all done. Now at this point, we are ready to start lacing. I've got my spokes back from zinc plating. These things are looking brand new again. Just gotta grab a rim and we can get after it. Let's start with the front. Man, that color combo is going to be wicked. Now this wheel uses all the same spokes. It doesn't use different length or different angled spokes. Now if you have a wheel that does use different spokes, you're gonna to wanna to refer to a diagram or maybe some pictures you took before you disassemble the wheel. But on something like this, you can just start popping in the spokes. It might be easier to do all the bottom ones first. And then the spokes that go on top, like these ones, do them after. You don't need to have the pattern perfect or anything because we're gonna flip it over. Just wanna make sure the top spokes are on top of the bottom spokes. Let's get all these spokes pulled through, laying flat, and you can just do the same thing with the other side. Now we're gonna set the rim over the hub and you wanna 
look back at those photos or a diagram and see which side of the rim faces which way. So on this wheel, the stamping was on the non-rotor side of the hub. Set this down. Then just kind of turn the rim around until the spokes start to line up. You'll see kind of a pattern here. Give you a little better view of how this lines up. So grab a spoke coming from this side of the hub, line it up with the rim, and it'll line up with that hole there. And you'll notice on the rim, there are holes that face up and face down. Like these are facing up, that one's facing down. So you want the spokes coming from this side of the hub to line up with these holes that are more upward facing. You also notice the holes on the rim are either facing right or left, and you wanna correlate that to the spokes and how they come out of the hub, which direction. So this spoke here is coming out to the right. It's gonna line up to that hole there. And this spoke turns to the left, and it'll go to that hole right there. And also the pattern, at least on this specific wheel, is you'll have spokes that cross and you're gonna have one hole in between or one spoke in between. Now, once you've determined which holes the spokes go to and the pattern around the wheel, you wanna grab some anti-seize and put it on the threads of the spokes. You wanna wear some gloves for this, it's pretty messy. Now we can pretty much just start lining up some spokes and twisting on some nipples. So I've got one half of the wheel laced makes it simpler just to do it one half at a time. So as you're lacing it, you wanna make sure the spokes coming from the bottom side of the hub are in between each of the spokes that you thread in. You can see that same pattern all the way around. Once you get going, you'll kinda of see what the pattern is and it's pretty straightforward. So now I can pretty much just thread in the other half of the spokes. And as you're threading those nipples on, only go about a quarter or third of the way up the threads any further than that and you'll kind of pinch the hub to the rim and you won't have a lot of room to get the other spokes in. Now we're going to need to tighten down the spoke nipples and to keep this wheel as straight as possible. We're going to want to tighten these nipples down evenly. So we're going to hit it from the back side with a screwdriver and just go until it's just snugged up. Basically just snug it up till there's about three or four threads left. Then we're gonna skip two spokes. Tighten down this one. Same thing till there's about three or four threads left. And then just carry that same pattern all the way around the rim. And that should keep it pretty true. And we'll do the fine tuning from there. All right, we're all snugged up. I'm just gonna get all this anti-seize cleaned off of here and then move on to getting the rear wheel together. All right, with the wheels all laced up, I'm gonna take a minute away from these things and introduce you to the new guy on the team and got some printing to do as well. This is Nick. He moved all the way from Wisconsin to help out here at the shop. He's been just killing it, helping with Prime, helping with the videos, with a contest around the house, you name it. He is the go-to guy. How you like working here? Oh, it's great. I love working here. Filling out orders left and right, getting things punched out. It's a blast. <laughs> yeah, he's working on one right here. Back yeah. in the corner, this is his uh, office setup over here, but you probably like working for me. I'm kind of a dick, huh? <laughs> yeah. So he brought his bike out here. Show him your bike. All right, so here we have the 2014 KTM. 
150 SX. When I bought it, only had like 20 hours on it, so it's pretty fresh. Just finished a, a pipe for it. Redid that. Dude, that thing is looking sweet. Yeah, we're gonna have that on in a couple days and ready to go. Yeah, me he's... and Cameron to get some ripping in. So. <laughs> yeah, he's also got a YouTube channel. How much you gonna yeah. pay me for a shout out? Pay you for a shout out? <laughs> <laughs> a t-shirt. <laughs> t-shirt. All right, yeah. sounds like a deal. What's yeah. your your channel called? Uh, Mintworks MX. All right, I will link it down below. Sweet. So if you guys notice, the videos are a little more crisp or a little better. <laughs> Give some thanks yeah. to this guy. Good deal. So I'm running a little bit low on these decals here. These are like the really reflective ones. So I'm gonna print more of these up. We've got red, gold, silver, and blue. These are the colors before they go into the printer. So the first one up is the two soaked. I'm gonna do that in red. We are all stocked up on stickers now. Nick's getting these things punched off the roll. That brown you see is just the backing there. Pretty sweet looking stickers. So we're actually gonna be doing a giveaway with these stickers for the next couple days. So any order on the store over $10, you'll be able to pick a few of these stickers up. Let me go on the computer and show you guys how this works. So what you'll wanna do is head over to the website, primemx.com. On the home page here, click on free items. Scroll down, you'll see the stickers here. I only have one on here so far, but click on it. And you can add it to your cart. Just select whatever color you want here. Add it to cart. And make sure you have at least $10 worth of merchandise in that cart or else it won't add. So there's one last sticker I wanna print up here with July 4th coming up. I wanna do a little red, white, and blue and uh, some two strokes involved. So let's fab something up on uh, Illustrator here. All right, this is what I came up with. Let's see how she prints out. Check out these stickers. They turned out absolutely badass. What do you think, Nick? Those are awesome. So I will have these up on the website. You guys can go check them out. So once again, these are a clear backing. The brown is just the uh, paper backing on there. I'm also thinking of doing some shirts with the same design on it. Let me know if that is something you guys would be interested in seeing. Enough of the sticker print, let's get back to the RM. All right, with the wheels all laced up, we can move on to truing them and doing the final tightening. So truing them is basically making sure they are spinning straight. You can do this either on a truing stand like this here or on the bike. For example, if you grab the front wheel, throw the axle through it, mount it up in the forks, you can spin it and hold something like a marker or a little indicator against the fork tube here and you'll be able to see where the wheel is out of true and you can make your adjustments from there. So we're gonna get the front wheel set up on here first, slide the axle through. I wanna put this sleeve on either side of the bearing as well as the collar. So you wanna pinch these sleeves against each other into the bearings, that'll hold the wheel tight in place. Snug them up. And then the collars on the end will just barely touch to the bolts there or the bearings. So now this is gonna be a test of how good of a job we did with the lacing, how evenly we tighten the spokes. Let's see, we got a little bit of wobble there. Not much up and down, just mostly side to side. So we're gonna start with correcting the side to side wobble here. So we're gonna get this indicator bar close up to the rim. Right there is about perfect. So we're gonna find the highest spot on the rim here. Looks like right about here. Now to correct this, we're gonna tighten the spokes coming from the opposite side of the rim. So we're gonna try to pull the rim over to the right here. And so we're gonna tighten the right side spokes and you wanna make sure the left side spokes are loose. So we're gonna loosen these about a full turn. Then we're gonna tighten the spokes on the right side of the wheel about half a turn. You just wanna go in small increments here. Then we can give it a spin and see where we're at. Looks like we're a little straighter. 
I'm gonna find that high spot again. Looks like right about here. We're gonna do the same thing here. Loosen three spokes coming from the left side and tighten three from the right side. Getting a little bit better. That is looking much, much better already. See, it just takes a little tweak here and there to try to correct it. If you do too much, you're just gonna play the game of going one side to the other, back and forth. And then about every three adjustments, I'll take the wheel and flip it around on the stand. That way we're not pulling the wheel to one side. You wanna kind of keep the rim in the middle of the hub here. Let's see if we can dial this thing in a little bit further. I feel like we got it spinning pretty straight side to side. Keep in mind it is a used rim and the rim itself isn't perfectly straight and it is a dirt bike wheel. You are riding on uneven terrain and you know bumps and holes and ruts and whatnot. So now that we've got the side to side movement worked out, we're gonna look at the up and down movement. Basically how much the rim moves up and down compared to the hub. Actually it looks pretty solid. There's a little bit there. Let's throw the indicator bar on it and see. You can just kind of slide it underneath the rim here and that'll tell us where we're at for up and down play. So it's not looking too bad. I'm gonna find the high spot on here. So right here is the center of the high spot and we're gonna tighten the spokes and this will basically push the rim towards the hub and even out that high spot. So since it's a pretty minor high spot, we're just gonna do two spokes on either side. Give it a little tighten. Once again, it doesn't take a whole lot here. All right, let's see how that affected it. Could use a little bit more. I think that's about as good as we're gonna get for this wheel. Now, one other thing to keep in mind with dirt bike rims, they always have a seam here, like a welded seam where they put the rim together and that's always gonna have a little bit of a dip or maybe a wobble one side to the other. That isn't the actual rim out of true, it's just the uh, seam kind of playing a trick on your eyes. So with the wheel all trued up, there's one last thing we wanna check here and that is the wheel offset. And so usually you measure this on the table. Let me pull off the stand real quick. So the wheel offset is measured from the rotor mounting surface to this edge of the rim. So basically this gap right here is the amount of wheel offset. Now Suzuki doesn't provide the wheel offset for these wheels, so I can't really do them to spec like that. It isn't super important, nothing to sweat about. The last thing we gotta do is the final tightening. We're just gonna go around and make sure all of the spokes are tightened to spec. Now you can do this either with just a spoke wrench or a spoke torque wrench like we got here. So the objective here is to tighten all the spokes without throwing the rim back out of whack. So we're gonna pick a hole on the rim here. I'm gonna go with that one there. Start at the first spoke, tighten that, skip two, tighten, skip two, tighten, go all the way around the wheel, come back to that hole, and then start at the second spoke from the hole, same pattern all the way around, and then do the third spoke from the hole, follow that same pattern, and once you've gone three complete times around the wheel, you will have hit every single spoke evenly and that should keep the wheel in true. Now the torque spec for these spokes is three foot pounds or 36 inch pounds. That's what this uh, torque wrench reads by. If you're using just a spoke wrench, 36 inch pounds should be no more than the amount of effort than to uh, like turn a doorknob. So it really isn't a lot, but it is nice to have a torque wrench just to make sure you're not over tightening or under tightening. Let's go ahead and set it to 36. Start at the first spoke from the hole. All right, there is 36. We're gonna skip two. And then just follow that same pattern. Now after the final torque, you wanna spin up the wheel again. Make sure it's still straight. Looks like this one went a little bit off. After a little tweaking, let's see how it's spinning. Oh yeah, she's dialed. 
I'm honestly really surprised this one straightened out as nice as it did. It is actually a used rim, used spokes and nipples, used hub. The only thing new on this is pretty much the wheel bearing. So it actually spins pretty close to a new wheel. Not bad for a 20 year old wheel. This goes to show you can make old stuff pretty much new again with just a little love. All right, let's move on to the rear wheel. See how this one is. This one's gonna need a little bit more work. So once again, if you have a high spot, like right here, what we're gonna do to correct that is tighten the spokes coming from this side of the hub, tighten about three to four, and you're gonna wanna make sure the spokes coming from this side of the hub are loose. Once again, three or four on either side. Looks like we got her spinning pretty straight. Just gotta fix the up and down play here. That is looking really good. Last thing we gotta do is hit it with the torque wrench and we'll be all dialed in. Well guys, that is it for lacing and truing. Really happy with how these ones came out. Actually, one more thing with lacing and truing. I made a video a couple years ago that goes a lot more in depth. It offers some troubleshooting and just a lot more detail than this video here. So if you wanna check it out, I will have it linked down below. If you guys are doing something similar and need any recommendations on tools, I will have all the stuff I use throughout this video linked down below. That includes the stand, torque wrench, spoke wrench, even like the uh, parts I used on the wheel, coatings, bearings, you name it, I will have everything linked down below. Well, that is it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know I definitely did. Lacing and churring is one of my favorite things to do on a build. And next up we have mounting the tires, which is gonna be another great video. So if you want to stay posted on that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I want to say thank you for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please give it a share. That's how the channel grows and I can continue bringing this content to you guys. So with that, I will see you in the next one. Keep it prime.